Today we're going to talk about the Vestal and what she can offer to your lineup. The Vestal is an interesting character. She has a lot of abilities that seem geared towards somewhat damage if you want to go that route, but she's also probably undeniably the best healer in the game because of her two healing abilities and the strength in which they can occur at. But she also has a little bit of utility through de-stealthing and stunning and even a self-empower if you choose to go the damage route with her, which we'll talk about and maybe the feasibility of that compared to just using her for heals and utility. Her background? The warrior nun channels her zeal for battle into healing abilities, holy judgments, and dazzling explosions of light. A strong backbone to any party, the Vestal can also hold her own on the front line with a powerful mace bash and close quarters condemnations. I mean, I would say it's pretty spot on. She, they pretty much reference all of her abilities in there, which is good. She can be front line, as they said. I don't know how much I like that, but we'll talk about that. She can obviously heal, and she's got dazzling explosions of light. It's just a stun, but once again, it is called Ray of Light, and we'll get to that ability. I'm going to do these skills in a little bit of a weird way, and what I mean by that is I'm going to do the first ability, which is Mace Bash, and then I'm going to come down to the very bottom skill and kind of equivalent those two to be the same thing, and then I'll go through the rest of the skills as normal. Mace Bash is her standard ability, accuracy of 105, which is standard, crit modifier of only 4%, which is fairly weak, and then like a cheap crusader, she gets 35% damage against unholy. And what I mean by Cheap Crusader is that's the same amount of damage modification a Crusader has, but once you see her base weapon stat, you'll understand why she's not nearly as good as a Crusader in the terms of base damage. Don't look at the base stats because I have a couple of quirks up there that increase protection and critical modifiers, so we're going to look at right at the weapon. Base damage of only 7 to 14, I believe a Crusader is 10 to 19, so you can already see what 35% damage would do to 10 to 19 that it wouldn't do. For 7 to 14. Critical base of only 5%, so obviously plus 4 is only 9%, then a speed of 6, which is also around the speed of the Crusader, I believe. Her armor gives her 44 HP, which is actually fairly tanky, but for a pretty low dodge of only 20, the vessel gets hit with a lot of abilities, and some things we have to consider is mostly stun and move resistance, which are things that you can see on this character are higher naturally based on the quirks, and I won them that way, which is why I picked and kept them. Obviously, Mace Bash excels at unholy characters, which means the runes would be very good. It hits positions 1 and 2, and it functions in 1 and 2 in your lineup, kind of like a Crusader Smite. There's not too much more to say. Once again, terrible against protection-based enemies, which usually sit in the first and second position. Therefore, her main damaging ability, I think, can get really rendered down quickly or you know reduced quickly depending on the lineup you get. Hand of Light, another reference to light. Accuracy of 105, damage modification of negative 50%, so you're looking at 3 to 7. Crit modifier 5%, you're looking at 10%, then 35% damage versus unholy. Therefore we'd have to go back in, refactor 3 to 7 with 35%, yada yada yada, doesn't get much higher than probably 5 to 10 or 4 to 9, whatever you want to do it. Now the thing that matters is the 10 accuracy and 35% damage. Once again, this is a self buff ability. 35% damage is pretty significant for 7 to 14, especially if you're also going against unholy. This is where you could start doing some pretty decent damage, but my only problem is, and I say it with everybody, I don't exactly like characters or abilities that take a turn to self buff, especially if they don't last the battle. I know I sound hypocritical when I say I like the leper's revenge, but that lasts the battle. This lasts X amount of turns and also doesn't do a lot of damage, therefore I'm not exactly thrilled about it. I think if you want to try to make the Vestal more viable, as always, you can do a Jester and a Plague Doctor if you want to add more speed and crit or just more damage and speed via the Plague Doctor. Hand of Light, I've used it a couple times. I'm going to have to use it because I get footage for all of them. But I really think, I mean, it's okay. You get that second strong round if it's against Unholy. If it's not Unholy, you might have to do it anyways just so you can get more strength or damage onto your mace bash if the people in front have a higher protection. 
to quickly go over where hand of light can hit it has to be used in the first or second row position which is why this is usually seen as a complementary to mace bash because it can't be used in the third or fourth which is where we'll use judgment and ray of light judgment from here on out we're gonna keep all the abilities the same and stuff we'll just go right down through Accuracy of 105, damage modification of only negative 25%, and a critical modifier of 9%. That's a pretty high critical modifier. And then you're going to get a self heal of 5 HP. Obviously, that will get affected by healing abilities and healing received, so that might be a little higher depending on what you have. I really like Judgment because it can be used third and fourth position, which is where her other two heals really excel at as well and it can hit any position in the enemy lineup. Thus, this can be a pretty good fourth position hitting ability if you don't have other trinkets on that reduce her damage. Because minus 25% from her damage already hurts a little bit, but at least there's a 10% critical modifier which can make up for that. This is also a cheap way to do damage and heal the Vestal if she's the only one in your party that needs to get healed. I have used that before. I was thinking, you know, I could just heal my Vestal for 15 by getting back 5 to 7 health depending on the healing trinkets. And even if it does 3 to 4 damage, it's still 3 to 4 damage and maybe half a heal. Because a full heal might be too much, but this might be just the right amount. Thus, Judgment can be very beneficial. Dazzling Light can be used in positions 2 to 4 on your side and hit positions 1 to 3. It is a stun that hits the third position, which is pretty cool, and its accuracy is 110, which is higher than the other stats she has. Therefore, if you give her an accuracy trinket or two, she can actually have a fairly reliable chance to use Dazzling Light and hit people with it. We'll look at a couple of quirks that increase, not quirks, we'll look at a couple of trinkets that increase accuracy, and you can see why that would be beneficial on the Vestal if you're going to use things outside of her heals. This is not a damaging ability, it's negative 75% like most stuns are that have decent row versatility. Now it does have a critical chance of plus 9% to her base, therefore if you get anything else with critical modifiers, obviously it's not going to do more damage, but when you critically strike with certain abilities like Blight Bleed, Resist, Debuff, and Stun, it adds an extra 20% chance to that ability, therefore this 140 goes to 160, which is a lot better. Another unintended consequence of this ability is the plus 6 to Torch, where I guess it is intended. But it's not really something you're thinking about. It does help when you have this ability to add Torch, because if you have Cultist Switches doing Stressful Incantation, it does bring down your Torch, and every time you use Dazzling Light, you can slightly counter that. And you can always keep your Torch probably between 80 and 100 without always having to burn an extra Torch. Therefore, you can maybe buy a few extra or less Torches per run, which definitely helps you in the early game because you can reduce all that with Dazzling Light and if you have other characters who can also help increase the torch artificially, you don't always have to be using torches which means you have more item slots and more money saved at the start. Therefore, those are some of the small economic gains you can have by looking at abilities such as Dazzling Light. It is a pretty good stun. I almost always have it equipped. In my Vestal skill lineup, I'll say, is almost always both of her heals, Judgment and Dazzling Light, because all those abilities function between rows 3 and 4. Dazzling Light can work in the second position, thus this is usually another ability you keep on in a melee build Vestal, because she can also then stun, so she's like a weird melee character that can stun the third row, which is something that's pretty rare among them. Divine Grace is definitely her single target strong heal. 8 to 9, then obviously you can buff that up with 30, 40, 50% heal trinkets, whatever, you know, whatever trinkets you put on. You could, you can easily get a comfortable 13 to 15 out, especially if you have quirks that help increase your healing, where people who have healing increase quirks or trinkets on them. This can really boost them up to even 16 to 17, depending on the right combination of abilities, quirks, and trinkets. There's not too much more to say about this. This is definitely an ability that will pull people right out of the depths of, you know, death's door. If you get a critical strike on this, there's no reason why it shouldn't be ranging between like 22 and 28, depending on your trinkets and quirks. Can, as I said, can only be used in third and fourth, so this gets looked at more of a utility based rather than having your vessel in the front and then using divine heal. Her next ability can be used in the second position but honestly at a cheaper cost of HP per individual.
divine comfort. Heal party 4 to 5. Now, since divine grace also sits higher for a natural 8 to 9, divine comfort, you need a lot of quirks and trinkets and stuff to really get that boosted. Because even 25% sounds like a lot, but that only makes this about 5 to 7 for the party heal then. 25% for divine grace could literally mean 10 to 12. Thus, it's like a 3 point gain and this is kind of like a 1 and maybe a 1.5 to 2. I'm not sure how the game exactly goes with that. I would imagine the game probably pushes it out to like 5 and 7. I don't know how the rounding goes. Which is pretty good, but if you get a lot more 5s than you do 7s, it's going to feel rather underwhelming. So you're going to need a lot of extra trinkets to push it up to maybe 6 to 8 or 6 to 9, 7 to 9, 7 to 8, whatever you get. Divine Comfort, though, is just so amazing. I'm not, I'm not trashing it. I'm just saying to really get the maximum effect of this, you really kind of have to go all in with quirks and trinkets and stuff. Thus, if you can heal 8 to 9 with a Divine Comfort, which is some pretty crazy HP increasing trinkets and quirks, it's so worth it because getting 8 health on every individual is just amazing because if you take any AoE, you can just pretty much reverse it. And there's a couple of bosses at all stages of the game, DLC, whatever, that do AoE damage that someone like an Occultist, Crusader, would not be able to handle. It'd just be way too much spread damage at a high level that no one can outcompete the Vestal in this heals. It, it is just a phenomenal level of heals, especially if you get a critical or two. It's just... The amount of HP is nuts, it's always reliable, it's always there, it has a decent row versatility of 2 to 4, so even if she gets pulled from 4 to 2, you can at least still Divine Comfort, you're not out of luck when that does happen to you. Divine Comfort probably makes the Vestal just the best healer ever, because it is a party heal, and I think sitting at 4 to 5 is perfect. I used to think it was a little low, but then I understood all the items and quirks you get, I think it's perfectly balanced, thus she's good for most boss fights. Illumination. This is an accuracy of 110, damage modification of negative 75%, but it does bypass stealth, decrease dodge, and give a whopping plus 10 to torch. Plus 10 to torch is pretty darn cool. It's just a small thing, but it's a, it's a nice small thing if you do decide to use this ability. Accuracy of 110, that's pretty good. Damage modification, 75%. Once again, you're looking very low on the scale for that. But the main purpose of this is to bypass, bypass stealth and de-stealth. And if you get the 30 dodge, that's pretty cool. A shout out to this ability is definitely when you're fighting the Shrieker. Illumination can be very good against the Shrieker for reducing dodge. And since it has a accuracy of 110, it's not the highest, but it's also a little higher. And if you get her an accuracy trinket, there really shouldn't be a reason why you don't have a 70-80% chance to hit the Shrieker. Once the debuff goes through, obviously that's going to become 100% then at that point. The only thing to keep in mind about Illumination is, and this is where the Utility Vestal can somewhat break off, if you put the Vestal in the 4th position, you're definitely going Judgment, Ray of Light, Divine Grace, and Comfort. Now if you like the Vestal in the 3rd position, where she can still use all the same abilities I just listed above, you can swap out Ray of Light, Judgment, or I guess any of the abilities out for Illumination, and I have done this in the past before to de-stealth individuals such as the Fusiliers, the Tidemasters, and the Hags, or the Hag Witches, or Crones, I forget what they're called in the Weld. Because those individuals being stealth can cause a huge problem if you don't have a lot of answers for them, and if you don't have a particularly strong stress damage remover, you might want those individuals to be unstealth so you can kill them off fairly quickly. As I said, another positive of this is just the minus 30 dodge. Reducing an enemy's dodge by 30 would probably often mean their dodge is down to either almost 0 or like 10, and at that point most of your abilities should be able to have a 95% chance to hit. Reading her campfire ability. Prayers, chants, and blessings bring peace and solace to the Vestal and her party. She can improve a companion's combat prowess or instead focus on reducing the group's stress and making the campsite a safe place for a good night's rest. It's a pretty solid description. It's what most of her abilities do. Let's get to Bless. Bless. 10 accuracy, 10 dodge, time cost of 3. It's a pretty good trade-off. I don't really know any characters that wouldn't prefer having 10 more accuracy or dodge. I usually end up putting these on individuals that are more glass cannon. Therefore, they can get to dodge. But I also love putting this on the leper because he really doesn't have a lot of dodge or accuracy, and this fills both of those voids. 
It's a really good choice on people who have low accuracy, and I even put this on my Highwaymen to complement Grape Shot Blast if I have it on. Chant. Time cost of three once again. Now we get into the realm of religious versus non-religious. So 20% if you are, 10% if you're not. 20% stress reduction for a time cost of three is pretty significant. Now this is only one companion, not all of them. And if they're religious, minus 15. And if they are not religious, minus five. I think it's worth it if you have a religious individual. I often don't anymore, thus I don't use it. Obviously, once again, we have religious. Now, this is all companions. Minus 15 stress if they are religious, minus 5 if they're not, and 15% protection if they are, and 5% protection if they're not. I think it's pretty cool. As I said many times, if you can rock a whole religious lineup, if you don't, 5 stress and 5 protection for a time cost of 3, not really worth it. And then we get to sanctuary. If religious... Well, self only. I don't know why it says if religious, it always prevents a nighttime ambush. And then all companions, if they have a morality debuff, they'll receive those. A morality debuff is an affliction, so they'll receive 50% HP recovery and minus 25 stress, which is pretty freaking awesome if you have someone's an affliction. If not, it's kind of not worth it. There's other better nighttime ambush preventing abilities out there. Such as the Houndmaster and the Highwayman both have an ability that reduces nighttime ambush, but increases the chance of surprising other party members and, well, not party members, enemy parties, and decreases the chance of you being surprised. Getting to the trinkets, I picked out some that are directly for healing, and then I picked out some that might be a little more for damage and back row related stuff. So we're looking at the Sniper's Ring, and this would definitely be if you're going that more Judgment, Ray of Light, and then Divine Grace and Comfort. 4% Critical, which just helps her get more of those criticals on the Ray of Light, which would increase the Sun Chance. And obviously the accuracy would increase by a significant amount of 15, thus maybe her 80% would now be 95s, or her 75s would be 85s, or 90, I said 75, 90, which is really good. So I think the Sniper Ring in certain situations can be excellent. I put on the signet ring on here, and when I did my trinket review, I didn't really talk it up, but I, I have seen myself use it on my vessels a couple of times. The protection helps her reduce a little bit incoming. It gives the accuracy which the sniper ring does, but doesn't remove her speed, and it's only for 10% stress. I wouldn't recommend maybe putting this on a vessel as one of her first items, but if you're too lazy to swap off items like I am sometimes, I don't actually mind putting on the signet ring, and this could also be used if she's a melee vestal. Because the 10% protection, she's going to get focused more in the front so she can reduce some damage coming in and then still get that nice accuracy to Mace Bash. I'm recording this at a different time, thus everything changed a little bit, but don't worry about that. Now we're on to the Sacred Scroll. This is minus 10% stress plus 33% in healing skills, minus 10% in the stun skill chance, and minus 33% damage. Obviously, the positives to this are the minus 10% stress and the plus 33% healing skills, and then the negatives are minus 10% stun skill chance and minus 33% damage. What I will say is, you will actually miss the minus 10% stun skill chance more than you probably will the damage if you use her as a 3rd and 4th position Vestal. Judgment will be significantly weaker, and sometimes that does come to bite you in the butt because you do just need to do more than 6-8 to eight damage, but a positioned 3 to 4 vessel is really more focused on just healing and probably stunning, which is why I said that the minus 10% stun skill chance is probably more of a pain than the minus 33% damage. Obviously, if you want Judgment to do more damage in the 4th position, doing only about maybe 5 to 6 with Judgment isn't what you need when you need to kill a cultist witch around 8 to 10 health. If you didn't have this item on, you could, but 33% healing and minus 10% stress is really good, and it's often one of my go-tos for the Vestal, especially since this is something you can see before going into a dungeon, so you can aim to get these. They're not something you just find, which I think makes them very good. Then we get to Jania's head. 30% healing, so very comparable to the, the scroll, but there is that plus 20% stress. This is a safe option, well, let me let me re reiterate that. It's safe if you don't want to lose damage and your stun skill chance. The plus 20% stress can be actually pretty brutal. However, if you have a Jester or your Vestal has no other stress increasing quirks, 
such as zoophobia or something, I think this could actually be okay. Anytime you add 20 stress, you do want to be careful though, because it doesn't take very long to get 40 to 50 stress. It literally takes maybe a bone royalty or two to go twice, and your person is sitting at a nice 60 to 70 stress. That is not something you want to do if you don't have any plans for it. If you think the campfire is going to take care of that, probably a campfire is not going to reduce 60 to 70 stress. Thus, most likely that Vestal is going to go into a, a facility after that dungeon. However, if you like to do the safe combination of a Jester and a Vestal, that's definitely a thing you can put on and not worry about too much. You could say Houndmaster, but if the Vestal gets unfairly and unjustly targeted, she is going to take just so much stress that you're probably just going to accept the fact she'll end with 50 to 60, and she'll have to spend a turn or two in stress-reducing facilities, depending how far in the game you are. I believe a Vestal can pair with anyone rather well. I don't think there's too many people she doesn't absolutely synergize with. You do have to watch out if you like a third and fourth position Vestal. She can have conflicts with other people who like to function in those rows. And sometimes those damage dealers will get pushed out of that position. Thus, they may not be viable anymore. If she is a damage dealer Vestal, you can kind of open up the field a little more with some decent heals and divine comfort and still have her do some damage or illumination, bringing enemies out of stealth, which is always pretty good. My final thoughts on the Vestal, I think she's just one of the best healers in the game, because you know she's going to be consistent, you can really buff up her heals to give you between 8 and 10 HP on a Divine Comfort, and well beyond that on a Divine Grace. That is very strong, some of the bosses in the game just do too much AoE damage for someone like an Occultist or other heals to really make up, and a Vestal almost feels like it's necessary. It's also very good in the Colors of Madness because once again there's a couple of guys in there that do just heavy AoE and no other healer in the game could make up for it. The Vestal is definitely someone you want multiple of in your party because you're probably going to have 2-3 to three out stress healing or whatever because as I said they do take a lot of damage or you might be removing negative quirks as per everybody. Therefore, having maybe 3-4 to four Vestals is recommended. There's not often I recommend characters breaching the 3-4 to four marker However, I think Vessels are an extremely important one to do, because if you only keep about two and one dies, or one dies and you had one in a stress facility, now you're down to zero and the game get rather difficult. So I think having at least three is crucial. The occultists are good healers, but however, like I said, certain bosses you're just going to need a Vessel for, and something would happen, you would regret not having a backup. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below.